How are you? Right there with the black um, mask looking at us. Okay. She got a concussion of so she um, can't look at the screen or maybe without getting a headache, so she's just going to have a listen if that's okay. Yeah, sure. I don't know if you want to do anything. Else. No, oh, no. Oh, all right. Just wanted to let you know. Sure, sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. See my name on the chart. Um, hmm. Can you please like just write your name on the back of it or something? Yeah. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you. 
Seems pretty thin today. A lot of people. There's a sign in sheet when you walk in. If you guys can just check off your name or whatever. Did everybody sign in on the table and grab two sheets that are back there? <clears throat> and there's folders if anybody needs a folder. All right, I guess we'll start. It seems pretty light. I feel like there should be a lot more people, but I guess not. I guess we're we're okay. How's everybody doing? Good. Anybody see the new James Bond movie that came out this week? Really? Man. It was awesome. Is that supposed to be like the last one ever? It's supposed to be the one, last one with Daniel Craig in it. Uh, I'm sure, I don't know what, the, but I have no what idea they got planned after this. So for all practical purposes, it's probably the last one for a while. All right. Welcome back to confirmation class. Um, just a couple of things. So last week's class was a little rough. Um, so I think I'm going to change it up just a tiny little bit, the way we kind of are going to run the show. Um, there's one one new rule. Please, if you get you have to go to the bathroom, please go one at a time. Um, the other thing we'll do a little bit differently is um, basically, I'll tell you, well, I'll tell you this. I, I suggested that we should make the class two hours. They laughed on my face. They said, you'll never keep their attention for two hours ever. I was like, really? You think so? So I think last week was a little uh, kind of proved that point pretty well. Uh, so I'll tell you this. If I could keep your attention for about a half an hour, if I can get like 30 solid minutes, I think what we'll do at 30 minutes is we'll kind of split the class up a little bit. And essentially, if you want to, I mean, there's things that I was sort of hoping we were going to kind of talk about in class um, based on last week. I think that's, I think my eyes were a little bigger than my stomach, if you can believe it. 
Um, so I think what we'll do is around the half hour mark, if, like I said, if you guys kind of bear with me for a half an hour and we do all the things that we need to do, we'll do that first. And at the half an hour mark, I'll basically say, okay, stand up. Whoever feels like coming up front, having a little bit of a chat and talking a little bit more about some of the things we talk about, great. If you'd rather go sit in the back and just chill out and chat for 45 minutes, that's fine too. So if we, if we do the things we need to do in the first half hour, we're good to go. Does that make sense? Cool? All right, very good. Um, did everyone sign in and grab the two papers, one of each, that were there? And if you need a folder, there's folders there. All right, so the first week when we met, I did a little pitch and we talked about God. We talked about the first commandment. Everybody remember what the first commandment is? By the way, if you haven't figured it out, the folders that you have, and like I said, if, if you don't have one, there's folders in the back. Please keep all of the sheets that I'm giving you guys. I figured rather than trying to get people to write things down in a notebook, I'll make it real easy on you. Just print these out. Please keep them. Last week, I gave you printouts that had two prayers on it, actually technically three. And this week, I'm giving you two more. And I also gave you a sheet with a couple questions on it, one through seven, I believe. And this week is eight through 16. Please keep all of these in those folders. And that you'll keep with you as we do confirmation. And keep it, like I said, just keep that organized, bring it in every week. And then other than that, you really won't have to write anything down. Um, so we talked about the first commandment the first week. We talked about the first commandment, which is, I am your God, and thou shalt not have false gods before me. And then the second commandment was what? Don't take the Lord's name in vain. Don't take the Lord's name in vain, absolutely. So who knows what the third one is? The third commandment is, keep holy the Sabbath day. Everybody know what that means? Go to, church every week. Go to church every week. And it also means go to church every week. Sabbath day also refers to having a day of rest, right? You guys are all you guys all stay pretty busy. So having a day of rest wouldn't be so bad, right? Um this is a good time to talk about community and the lack of community. I think a lot of people these days sort of lose track of what community really means. We get distracted a lot by social media, that sort of stuff. And we sort of convince ourselves that that's what, you know, being social is all about. And reality is having a family and having an extended family. So I hope that when you get your, get your confirmation that you still continue to go to church and be part of the church. Because having that sense of community is important and there's a lot of people walking around who don't have that and are pretty unhappy and they they kind of can't figure out why they're unhappy well this would be a good reason um also real quick if you ever have a bad experience at church i can't tell you how many people i know that say oh i don't go to church anymore because i had a bad experience with a person at church don't don't do that 
I say to people, I'm like, if you if you if you had one bad experience in a in a in a movie theater, would you never watch movies ever again? Probably not. So don't let it one single bad experience dissuade you from being part of church. Um, and another thing I want to sort of focus on again, like I said, I promised I would keep it quick. Um, taking a day of rest for yourself is a good day to sort of focus on the things that are important to you. There's there's kind of a I don't know if you call it an expression or a story, but there's an expression or that was something we refer to as sharpening the saw. One guy's trying to cut down a tree in the woods. He's, he's sawing back and forth, trying to cut down this tree. Finally, somebody comes up to him and says, you know, if you stop for a second and sharpen the saw, you'd probably get the tree cut down. The guy says, well, I can't, I got no time. So the other guy takes a minute, he sharpens his saw. He goes and chops down the other tree and the other tree falls down. Lesson being, if we don't stop for, for once in a while, kind of collect ourselves, regroup, you know, we run out of steam and we can't do the things that we want to do. So this is a good time to sort of stop, focus on yourself, you know, and take care of some of the things you want to do. Take a little breather once in a while. Um, all right. So real quick. Oh, by the way, that's a bad move. I should have started off with a prayer, shouldn't I? How about we all stand up? We'll do a sign of the cross and we'll do the two prayers that we already covered so far, which is the Our Father and the Hail Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. So while we're standing, why don't you grab the prayer that I just gave you, and we'll do the first one, the Apostles' Creed. Everybody have it? Ready? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Thanks for sitting. You'll probably notice when you're in church, sometimes the wording on this is slightly different, but it probably sounds familiar. So let's look at the questions. These are questions eight through 16. Everybody knows who Adam and Eve is, I assume? Okay. What did Adam and Eve do? Who are they? They are the first humans. The first two humans, exactly. Oh, I have the are they on the table in the back?
And if you need a folder, feel free to grab a folder. Question number eight, did Adam and Eve remain faithful to God? What's the answer to that? Definitely not, right? Adam and Eve did not remain faithful to God, but broke his commandment by eating the forbidden food, fruit, right? God said one thing, don't do this. And what's the first thing they do? They ate the apple. What happened to Adam and Eve on account of their sin? Adam and Eve, on account of their sin, lost innocence and holiness and were doomed to misery and death. What is the sin called which we inherit from our first parents, Adam and Eve? Does anybody know this one? Original sin. Original sin, absolutely. The sin which we inherit from our first parents is called original sin. It wounds our human nature and inclines us towards sin. Was anyone ever preserved from original sin? Anybody know this one? Jesus. Um, good, 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 good answer. But technically, that's not the answer. The Blessed Virgin Mary, through the merits of her divine Son, was preserved free from the guilt of original sin from the first moment of her conception in her mother's womb. And this privilege is called Immaculate Conception. When the Virgin Mary was blessed with the Lord Jesus, that was the Immaculate Conception. What is actual sin? Actual sin is any willful thought, word, deed, or omission contrary to the Lord of God. Meaning if you commit a sin and you understand that you're committing a sin and you do it anyway, that is an actual sin. How many kinds of actual sins are there? Two. Two? That's correct. What's that? Venial and mortal. Venial and mortal. That is absolutely correct. What is a mortal sin? It is a deadly sin. Um, I think that's probably correct. But that a mortal sin is a grievous offense against the law of God committed with sufficient reflection and full consent of the will. Thus, for a sin to be a mortal sin by which we lose the sanctifying grace, there needs to be three things, a serious matter, sufficient reflection, and full consent of the will. So basically, it needs to be reasonably serious, and you have to be well aware that you're committing a sin and you decide to do it anyway. And what is a venial sin? It's like a light sin that, um, that could be made up for. It's the Diet Coke of sins, right? Venial sin is a slight offense against the law of God and matters of less importance or matters of great importance if it is an offense committed without sufficient reflection or full consent of will. Meaning, right, if it's not the biggest deal in the world, it's a venial sin. Or if it's a little more serious, but you weren't very conscious of the fact that you were doing it, I'm not sure what a good example of that might be, but that would be a venial sin. Everybody good? Are we going to keep these in our folder? Yes. By the way, does everyone have copies of what I gave out last week, last class? Oh, oh I wasn't here last week. Okay. Um, I can have them look out the line. I'm sorry. I can have them look out the Um. Actually, I should have. You would think if I'm asking, that would mean I would have a copy to put in it. I don't know if I do, but I'll make sure I have it next week for you guys who don't have it. No, because I mean, I don't want them to have to make copies. I'll just bring it. But thank you, though. Etc. Um, I'll, I'll check. We'll see if I have any.
Okay. I think we, um, like I said, we covered the bare necessities. Like I said, if you guys give me like a half an hour, we can, we can, I can work with that. Um, everybody stand up. So like I said, if you'd like to come forward and we'll have a little chit chat about some of the things we talked about, come up to the first few rows. If you want to just chill out in the back, totally cool. Yes, that means you can go now. So nobody saw the James Bond movie? Are you going to? No, I'm not sure. Um, you came to my first class, we were in the back room, right? Yeah. Yeah, but you're supposed to be in this class, right? And I said, I said, he's too smart to be in the seventh grade class. There's no way. <sighs> um, so how's everybody? Yeah. Um, so we're keeping holy the Sabbath day, right? And so assuming that that means in addition to keeping the Lord's Day sacred and going to church, what do you think would be a good way to spend the Sabbath day? Praying. Praying is excellent. Absolutely. Resting. What's that? Resting. Resting. Absolutely. Spreading the word of God. Spreading the word of God. Absolutely. How would you do that? Preach to your friends. Teach your friends a little bit about how to Like setting a good example would be a good example of that. Right. Spend time with your family? Absolutely. 100%. Exploring God's creations in the woods. That's good. I love that. Absolutely. Yeah. Appreciating what, what the gifts that God gave us. 100%. What else? That's a lot of good stuff. Um. So I want to talk about if I if I had like a TV like I had the first week. Um. I was going to set something up, but since I don't. Um, one of the things I sort of want to, in all these classes, I'm hoping that some of the things you guys will get out of it, um, I mentioned the first week, just sort of an appreciation and an understanding for God, um, and with that comes a sense of gratitude, right? Um, and one of the things I mentioned briefly last week, again, like I said, last week didn't, didn't really work so well, um, but one of the things that I hope you guys have is a sense of confidence, meaning... You know, if we have time to sort of talk about some of the things that are important to us, that way when you run into situations, you sort of already have a heads up. Like, I kind of already know how I'm going to handle the situation because I've had some time to think about it beforehand. And that sort of gives you a sense of confidence, right? Um, confidence is a great thing. Um, I read a book by a guy who used to say that he would, just to sort of work on his confidence, if he was in a coffee shop once in a while, he would just lay on the ground. Land flat on his back, count to ten. Why? Just everybody's looking at him like he's a nut. But he, just to give him a sense of like, you know what? I don't care. It's okay. Um, not saying you got to do that, but just having the confidence to be in situations where you say, look, you know what? Don't feel like doing that. Don't got to explain why. It just doesn't sit right with me, right? Um, one of the things I hope that we can. Another thing that I hope you guys sort of walk away with is a sort of sense of perspective, right? You ever hear the expression? I'm sure you probably have this. But if I if I said this person can't see the forest for the trees, what does that mean? You look like you have. I think I got it. It's like they don't like understand what what it is that makes up something. Kinda, yeah. You're on the right track. Meaning, like, they don't really have a good sense of perspective, right? They don't. They can't see the bigger picture. 
You know, when they say they can't see the forest for the trees, it means like if you're standing in the woods and you're standing in front of a tree, you have a good idea of what that tree is, but you don't really have a sense of like the size of the forest, the density of the forest, etc. Right? If you had like a drone, right, that went up, you can have a good sense of like the bigger picture, right? So perspective is important, right? When, we're, when we kind of come up, when you know, when ideas confront us, you know, people come up to you and tell you, you know, this is how it is. Sometimes, it, okay, it sounds good, but like if I, let's, let's step back and look at the bigger picture. How does it sort of affect, you know, the bigger picture of things? Um, so here's a couple of examples. Tell me some things, and by the way, I kind of briefly mentioned last week. To, to sort of jot down some of the things you do every week. I don't know if anybody even bought that. Um, what are some of the things you do every day or every week, let's say? I pray multiple times. You pray multiple times a day? Excellent. I love that. What are some of the other things? That just everyday stuff. Okay. It doesn't have to be like good stuff, church related stuff. It could just be like, yeah. Every day, every day, I go, go after after school. Every day, I go walk on my, with my dog. Nice, excellent. What's that? Sports, absolutely. Go with. Um, how about just going to school? Right, going to school, homework. Right, that would be one. How about just kind of like, what's that? I thought I heard something. Um, what about like um, silly stuff? Like, okay, I text with my friends probably every day. Um, TikTok, one of the other ones. I don't know. Is Facebook for old people now? Do you guys still want Facebook? You don't have Facebook? Good. Um, all right, so some of the things we just, that I just said. If we were to sort of like draw, I drew a big square and I put a thing in the middle, you had four boxes, right? And I said, okay, everything here is stuff that's like important. This column is important. This stuff here is not important. And then what if I kind of drew one that went this way? And I said, okay, everything is in the top. These are all things that are urgent, right? They're things that have like deadlines. And down here is like the things that don't, okay? So you'd have like important and urgent. You'd have important but not urgent, right? You have those um, sort of stuff. Not important, but it's urgent, and then neither one. Not important, not urgent, at all, right? Like, what would be Im important, like, not important, but urgent? Well, that would be like, if the phone rings, if the doorbell rings, like, it could be nothing, but I got to do it now, right? Because it's right in front of me. I got I to do it. It's right here. Um, important and urgent would be, that would be like, okay, homework, right? I got to do the homework, and I know when I have to have it done, right? Um, and of course, you got not important, not urgent. That's like the fun stuff, like video games, whatever else. The box down here, right? The box that is the stuff that is important but not urgent. That would be stuff like praying, right? Um, and when I say not urgent, I mean it's you know, like I said, it's important, but there's no time frame. There's nobody saying you have to do it by three o'clock, right? So you just sort of do it when you have the time to do it. Um, spending time with your family is another one. That walk through the woods, you know, looking at nature. That's all stuff that we know is important, but it's not really urgent, right? Usually that stuff, sometimes that stuff is usually the most important stuff, right? Um, if you guys were a little older, I would have put exercise in that box. You guys probably do sports anyway. You're probably running around having a good time anyway, so it's not real urgent. When you get to be my, my age, it's like, oh yeah, better exercise or else I'm gonna get fat. Um, and I'm in shape and I'm healthy. So, like I said, the stuff, when you, and, and the reason why I'm sort of talking about this on the day we're talking about the Sabbath, because that's a great time to stop and think about those things and say, okay, what are the things that I should be doing? Like I said, nobody told, nobody told me I have to do this by a certain day, so chances are these are the things I might want to be focusing on when I have time, right? Reading for your own pleasure, right? Probably we read a lot for school, so the idea of reading a book just for our own fun sometimes is like, you know, I read all the time for school. But maybe that's a good time to read something, maybe about a subject that interests you. You know, if you have an idea maybe about what you want to do after school. I don't know about, you know, everybody's planning to go to college 
that kind of thing. Maybe you have some idea what you want to do after school, but you're not real sure. Maybe that Sunday is a good time to just put other things aside and start looking at, you know, other possibilities, other fields that might interest you. Decide what does and what doesn't, you know, that kind of thing. Does that make sense? Um, by the way, last, um, I think I, I did this with the other class where we wrote down questions on, on an index card and handed them in. It worked really well with a small class, worked terrible for a big class. Um, but if you guys have things you would like to talk about, ask questions about, this is a good time to do that. What you got? Um, Today, um, so on here it says we descended into hell. Does that mean we just died? Um, I tell you what, it's fun. It's interesting because most versions of that don't say that. Like when I go to church every Sunday, we do a version of this, and it never says that. But I and when I went to just sort of like look it up on the internet, so like copy and drop it, I look. I saw that. I said, wait a second. I looked at a couple of versions, and I'm like, is this right? Like, like, and I, I, I think what that refers to is the idea that not not that he went to hell because he was bad, you know, but I, but I do think that Jesus went to hell to confront the devil, possibly or whatever. Um, I think that's what that refers to. Yeah, you can you can, you can be sure Jesus didn't go to hell because he did anything bad. I was debating on that to be honest, because I don't know if we should be asked up here. But um, I'm just going to ask it. Okay. Um, one of my Christian friends believe that like, the devil being supernatural. And the devil and the supernatural? Um, well, like when you say this, that to me sounds like two very different things. Like, I certainly believe in hell and the devil. Um, you know, but I don't know if if I have a good concept of what the devil is per se. If that makes sense. Um, so, but I certainly believe in God. So I certainly believe that there's another opposing force. If that makes some sense. Um, with regard to the supernatural, it depends with me. I mean, that could mean a lot of different things. Um, like, is there something specific that you had in mind as you were saying that? Why do Christians believe in the devil? Well, I it, I mean, Christians believe in, in the devil specifically is is a fallen angel um, that God actually cast down. So you know. You know, I, I why do I mean is there a reason why you think we shouldn't believe in it? I mean like if it's so bad to believe in other gods, believe in other things other than God, mm. like if we believe in the devil's technically that should fall under one of the kids. Well, but the devil's not God. I mean, we're not the, the idea of not believing false gods or not following false gods means we're, we're we're talking about something that replaces God. Um, certainly, the devil is Paul Robinson. I mean, we, you know, it's not. We're certainly not worshiping the devil. We hope not. Um, so, I don't know if that answers the question. I mean, it, it, it's interesting because Christians, like, like, obviously we are all Christians, you know, Catholics are a kind of Christian. Um, there are certain, there are Christians who, you know, all of the different denominations, you know, we essentially believe in the same God, but we worship the God slightly different. Um, so, you know, so again, if, if they believe something like a little bit different than I do, it doesn't mean it's bad. It certainly doesn't mean it's wrong. It just, 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 it's just not what we believe in. Yeah, so, that makes sense. I mean, I have friends who are Christians and we've had debates and things. Um, a lot of Christians, you know, they, they really don't worship Mary the way we do. Like, we hold Mary in a very high point. I've seen a lot of Christians have problems with this because they sort of feel like you're putting Mary a little too close to God. Um, you know, but again, it's, it's, it's and I, we don't, we don't say she's higher. But we have saints, we have people that we look up to because they're good examples of good people who do good things. So again, you, you, you're just sort of worshiping slightly differently. But you know, I mean, it's a good. Like when you when you start off by saying maybe I shouldn't ask this here, but I'm gonna. That's exactly what I want. I want I want the kind of questions that like you feel like maybe I shouldn't be asking. 
This is where you ask stuff like that. You know what I mean? What you got? Why are we taught that Adam and Eve were the first people on the earth who was made out of the same way as Adam? That Eve, Eve was made out of the same clay as Adam? Lilith. Lilith. I, well, I'll tell you what. I This is sort of a question that I asked my priest when I was probably right around your age. Um, <laughs> You know, one of the questions that I asked when I was younger is, you know, you know, when you read the Bible, it says that God created the earth in six days. You know, they rested on the seventh day. Um, and if you read it, it says, you know, on the seventh day, you know, for six days, God created all the animals that walk around, all this and the other thing. And of course, like, here I am and I go, um, if that's true, where, where do the dinosaurs kind of fit into that? And of course, he just sort of laughed and he said, look, the bottom line is, the Bible is not meant to be a history book. It's not meant to be a science book. It is. It's meant to teach us lessons, you know, on on how to to live, how to get through life, and how to have a good relationship with God. So a lot of that. I mean, the bottom line is I, I don't have a literal answer for it. Um, I would say it's it's symbolic of where we all come from, essentially, and probably the best answer I got for that one. That makes. I don't know if that answers your question in a satisfactory way. Uh, well, it's not like a question. I just want to know about like, what you think about mm -hmm. Satanists. So, you know, like what Satanists are? Are they Satanists? Not personally, but sure. Well, I mean, yeah. uh, what, why do you think that, they, that they're Satanists? Because if they're Satanists, that means they also believe in God. So why would they worship Satan? Um, I mean, I, I mean, the, the blunt answer is because they're not very smart. Um, you know, I, 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 again, I don't know why people do stupid things. I don't know why there's dumb people in the world. Um, you know, there's a, there, I don't know if you hear this expression of this term often these days, but counterculture is a big thing where, you know, people, they, they kind of always want to go against the grain and I'm not going to do what, 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 you know, what the mainstream does. I'm always going to do something different. There's people who take that to the extreme. I, you know, I feel like in a lot of ways, you know, we're, we're sort of dealing with a lot of people who are counterculture, but haven't really taken five minutes to really understand culture to really be counterculture. They're just, you know, they're sort of doing their own thing. I couldn't tell you what goes through the mind of somebody who says, I want to be a Satan worshiper. Have a, if, if, you, if you have a nice life, you know, if you enjoy yourself and you, you feel like your life is more complete by doing that, what am I going to say? I, I just feel very strongly that they're probably not as happy doing that as they would pretend to be. I think a lot of people do things, again, just to be edgy and different. They're not very happy and don't really understand why. And, and the way I look at it is very simple. Right? But, I don't know if that helps. Um, is God, like, not Didn't he originally not make hell for humans? Um, that's a good question. I don't know if I know the answer to that. I don't. I don't think. You know, did you ever see the Matrix? It's gonna sound like you're probably like I can't believe this guy's really gonna quote the Matrix. Um, Matrix to me is a great movie, and there's a lot of great symbolism in it. Um, one of the things you remember the part where he's got him hostage and he's, he's explaining, you know, we created the first Matrix to be a paradise. It was supposed to be just a complete paradise. Everything was supposed to be wonderful. He goes, but basically humans rejected it. We just could not come to terms with it, and, and, and you guys ultimately rejected it. That's why it's a little more. That to me is a, a great, like, modern example of what you're talking about. Like, essentially, Adam, like, the Garden of Eden was supposed to be a paradise that we lived in. There was no sin, there was no nothing. We're just, we're just happy. God said, just don't do that one thing. And of course, we just can't resist doing that one thing, and now everything turns to whatever. Um, and I think that's a good, again, that's a good metaphor for, for life. You know, like, I, I think it's, if it was up to God, everything would just be wonderful and there'd be no problems. We are the ones who, again, by nature, have to sort of find problems and a lot of things. If God says, says to forgive people, you think he forgives Adam and Um, that's a great question. I, you know, I, I feel that 
I feel like God forgives us for a lot of things. You know, I, I think that God sort of recognizes when you're a good person and you try your best to do good things. You know, um, so again, so I, I, I don't think I, I personally don't think God is a harsh God. Put it that way. Um, I think as long as we're doing our best, as long as we keep God in our lives and we, we try to do right by other people. I mean, you know, like you said, when we first talked about the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments, the first three have to do with your relationship with God. The rest is just simply how we treat each other. Um, so, again, as long as we're treating our fellow man right, we should be okay. Do you have another one back there? Yeah. Why did he go to hell before going to Like I said, that is a great question. I, I don't know if it's meant to be literal, but... So you guys are really going to test like my 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 Catholic knowledge on a lot of things. Um, I, I I simply think that that means he he basically had words with the devil and uh, came back when he was ready to come back. Uh, obviously he didn't go because he did anything wrong. I, I think if Jesus went to hell, it was his own choice to, to do that. I'm going to say history class. Hmm. Um, first of all, I don't know why we're learning about history class. Hmm. Not my class. <laughs> well, but okay, I messed it up. Okay. Um, so I learned that Jews and Romans are originally hating Christians because they originally don't believe that Jesus came down to Earth when it was originally him, and that Christians believe that he did. And technically, Jews and Christians are supposed to be the same religion. I was talking about that. I don't understand. Well, it's a, that's a that's a great multifaceted question. First, I, I want to just to talk about the first thing you said. The reason why. Why do we talk about religion in history class? Well, I mean, obviously, most I mean, it's, it's interesting. We live in a world now where we sort of like like the secular, non-religious world. We sort of sort of acknowledge this is sort of being like real life, sort of, and religion is this thing that's sort of off to the side. In reality, for most of history, religion was the defining factor for almost everything we did. Um, any, you know, what, all the positives and even all the negatives. I mean, there's like tribes would fight each other because of religion, um, you know, when we're a little less civilized than we are today. Um, I mean, even, you know, people like, like I'll get into a discussion with people about, about marriage as an example, about, you know, what, what, you know, why marriage this and the other thing. And I, I kind of remind people, I say, you know, marriage has been around for thousands of years, like long before the government ever came along and decided to, to, to dictate what marriage actually is. I mean, marriage happened in churches for literally thousands of years long before there was ever a country called America, long before they decided, you know, we should, we should start making laws about what religion or what marriage is and isn't. Um, but anyway, but to get to your point, um, well, the, you know, again, before Jesus walked the earth, I mean, essentially, we, the Jewish religion, I mean, we, we stem from the Jewish religion. Um, Jesus was a Jew. That was essentially, I mean, the reason why they call, you know, when they, they usually you usually hear people say Judeo-Christian values, Judeo-Christian. I mean, that's the religion that we all sort of come from. Um, the reason why we sort of split at some point was because Jesus came along. We all acknowledge that God sent Jesus down, you know, to, to save our sins and to be the Son of God. The Jews kind of just said, uh, well, "No, we don't believe that." So we, 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 the Jews don't acknowledge Jesus. That's basically why we're different religions at this point. We, we became Christians and the Jews sort of just kept on doing what they were doing um, without changing anything. Um, but again, but we, we do all come from the same plot. This is why most of our values, you know, for, for all practical purposes are very similar. Um, so I mean, uh, to answer the question, we should get along with them with no problem. You said something about why, like why we don't get along or why we shouldn't get along or something like that. Or the teacher said something like that. Yeah, I mean, obviously we should get along with everybody. It was a good person. So I mean, that, that's the bottom line for that. Anybody? And by the way, you guys, it doesn't have to just be religion. It could be kind of anything that's sort of going on in the world, that sort of thing, too. You guys can branch out a little bit if you want. 
I had a question, but that answer pretty much answered. What was it? What was it? Well, there you go. Yeah. I mean, basically, there's nothing in the Old Testament that we have any objections to. Basically, again, we were part of the same religion right up until the birth of Jesus. And then we became Christian, and we believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus, you know, that the same God sent Jesus down. They just don't believe that. So they just, so basically, if you're Jewish, it's like any old old testament is good all that new testament stuff that's for you christians so, so again we 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 were along you know the same lines right up until jesus came along so everything in the old testament is still extremely valid perfectly valid so can jewish people go to heaven if they don't believe that jesus is the son of god um you guys are really gonna put me to the test today um, I, I have no problem with, like I said, I believe any good person goes to heaven. So, um, if they believe differently than I do, I, you know, again, we, the thing to keep in mind is that we will always run into people who believe different things than we do. There are probably some people who might object to that and say, you know, you shouldn't, you know, if this person thinks differently than us, there's something wrong. I, I, for the most part, I don't, and, and I've never met anybody in the Catholic faith who actually believes that we should ever be rude to anybody or, or, or have a problem with anybody who believes. If you're a good person, you go to heaven. You know, we are Catholics, we are Christians. So so with that in mind, you know, so there's, there's a, put it this way. I think that even good people, like if, if they have a different idea about what's right and wrong, if they know in their mind something is right, but they consciously do something else, I think God would have a problem with that. Like, you knew that this was the right way to go, and you chose to do something else. Um, somebody else might have a different idea of what's right, right? Um, probably, probably confusing more than I'm clarifying. But, I mean, the bottom line is, again, as long as people are good people, they're okay in our books. And, and you know, we, if we all want the same thing, we all want good things for people, that's just important. Well, since Jesus has allowed us to go to heaven, what do the Jews believe about heaven? What do the Jews believe about heaven? Because of Jesus Christ, we are allowed to go to heaven. What would the Jews believe about heaven? I mean, I, I don't know what the Jews believe specifically. So I can't, I'm not really the authority on that. Not really the authority on much at all. Um, but I, I, I mean, again, the Jews, they essentially worship the same God we believe, but, but, we, but we believe that Christ is part of, you know, the God um, that we understand. So like I said, I mean, they just, they, they see God a little differently than we do, but essentially they're all trying to do their best to do, to do right by people. That's kind of what it boils down to. Just talking about Christians in general. So we're talking about an example, and then one was uh, a Jew, kind of like church, I don't know what it's called, but it was uh, synagogue. Jewish church is a synagogue. Yeah, synagogue was um was you know shooting two mm. times uh, in a row. And the uh, church was only burnt down once. The church is only burnt down once. That's a very interesting question. I think you, how did you start that question? Um, you said if they're not bad people, then why? Is that what I heard? Or am I getting that wrong? No. Uh, why are Jews targeted for Christians? Yeah. Um, that's a great question, and I frankly don't have a good answer for that. I, I, that is very true. Anti-Semitism is a, is a very real thing that, that happens, and I frankly don't really know why. Um, yeah, I really, I don't really have a good answer for that, but that is absolutely true. Um, but I mean, the bottom line is, again, I don't know why people, I don't know why people hate other people. Um, you know, and, and I don't mean to sound, I don't mean to sound aloof or just oblivious to to realities in the world. But I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, you know, I can't really get my head around why people hate other people. Like if somebody does something wrong to you, I mean, 
Sure, that makes sense. But, the, but but for me to hate somebody who I don't know personally, who you know I've never had a run-in with, who's never done anything to me, you know, kind of can't really get my head around it, frankly. Um, you know, I mean, you have to be. Something's got to be wrong with you. If you if you you know go after somebody else who didn't do anything to you. Um, that's the best I got, but you're absolutely correct. I mean, it does exist, but they really couldn't give you an intelligent answer to why. What else you got? Like I said, you guys can, you guys can talk about anything you want. And this is good, by the way. I, I like this. This is happening. This was, I'm glad I sort of broke it down into smaller, smaller chunks. Um, again, first of all, no stupid questions. Um, the difference between Christians and Catholics, it's it's the difference between a dog and a poodle. You know, I mean, they're, they're you know, a poodle is a dog, not all dogs are poodles. Um, you know, within the Christian faith, we all kind of get into specific um, understandings of, of Jesus and God and what he wants from us. Um, and, and I'll say it another way, too. You know, we are all pretty much since, I mean, again, Christ walked the earth 2,000 years ago. Um, it's, it's probably not unusual that we would all kind of do our best to understand, you know, what he wants from us and how we interpret the things that he said. Um, so it probably is just natural that we would sort of, you know, have different opinions and different things. I will say this. I mean, I can I can honestly, thankfully say, I mean, the Catholic Church has literally been around since the time of Jesus. It was literally created um, in the time of Jesus. So um, in terms of, you know, you know, like people sort of will jokingly say, like, you know, of all the religions, it's like, which one's got it right? You know, and and again, I would never ever tell another person of another faith that they're not going to get it right. But but I mean, I can say with a lot of you know confidence that the, the Catholics have been around for a long time, and, and I can honestly say that I think we're doing it pretty well. If that, makes, if that makes any sense. Um. So we're I'm kind of confused because. That being Catholic is like Catholic or Christian or whatever. Well, like that goes all the way back to like believing in Jesus. But Jesus was Jesus. So I'm just kind of confused like if like Jews being Jewish came before being Catholic. Yeah. Well well <laughs> I mean the right. I mean, at, at some point, what you're describing sort of boils down to just kind of wordplay. Um, absolutely, Jesus was was a Jew at the time, um, but again, Jesus was the Son of God. So we basically follow Jesus. So for us to be Jewish because Jesus was Jewish would sort of it wouldn't make any sense. I mean, Jesus Jesus changed the game. You know, he, he did change the game, and, and, and again, we became, you know, Christians and, and, and had a better understanding of what God wants because Jesus was here. Um, the Jews said, no, Jesus is not. So, again, the Jews just kept on doing what they were doing, and, and we followed Jesus. So. Uh, uh, how did, like, how did Jesus become a Jew? Did he just, how did that uh, Well, again, I mean, the, you know, again, the way we understand the Jewish religion, I mean, you know, they, we all followed the same gods. I mean, you know, Jesus came down, and he, he was a Jew because the Jews were, were the Jews were getting it right. I mean, they, they, Jesus said, yes, the Jewish people have an understanding of what God is looking for, what God wants from us. Um, so it would only make sense that he would be Jewish. Um, but again, he also brought new things to the table. He, he brought a better understanding of what, what God wants from us. And that's why we, we, we follow the teachings of Jesus. This this is probably like a actually silly question, but if BC is before Christ, AD is after Christ, would zero be when Jesus was born or when he died? Or would it be this his entire life? Um I think the technically it's the birth of Jesus. But if you get into the very specifics, I think I think the way 
that's more like a science question than how people have organized the calendar. I, I think technically, I, I think I've heard like it's actually like a couple of years after the birth of Christ that they actually started that. Um, but for, for, for the sake of simplicity, it's basically the birth of Jesus. Sorry? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, What's the difference between BC and BC? I don't sure know. BC is the four common characters. So, if Jews and Christians. Are you in all the smart classes, by the way? Are you, are, you, are you in the advanced classes in school? You're going to kick me out of my toe here. You feel? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> if Jews and Christians originally were the same religion, when did they basically split up and why? They split up when Jesus was born, when, when Jesus taught. I mean, when Jesus. Um, I mean, I, I, I suppose another way to say it is that, you know, Jesus was a Jew and he followed the Jewish teachings. Up until a point, and then, then there were points, I suppose, where Jesus said, "Okay, you guys are close, but 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 I think God wants this." Um, and the and the Jew basically said, mm, "Not so much." I mean, again, you, you know, the, the the thing is, to the Jews, you know, the first commandment is, "Thou shalt not follow the false gods." To the Jews of the time, you know, either they became a follower of Jesus, or they said, "Wait a second, this guy is breaking the first commandment because he's saying that he represents God." You know, and a lot of Jews were in heaven. So this is why there was sort of a, you know, the, the split. And this is why the split, I suppose, on some levels wasn't very, you know, at the time, it didn't go over very well. I don't know, that's probably not an answer to your question at all. You know, I mean, that's I mean, that's the bottom line. But the bottom line is, again, we, you know, religion, it's it's like, like in the Marvel movies, the timeline splits. You know, we were all sort of on the same timeline. And then Jesus came along and, and you know, made some changes to what was what, what we understood. So the Christians went this way and the Jews went that way. You know, but but we do come from the same fundamentals. Do they believe in hell? I believe so. Yeah. I was purgatory because I've heard it explained a few different ways. How it's the midpoint where it's almost like Yeah. Um I and, and that's an interesting question because I've heard different things about purgatory in terms of like a lot of people I think don't really believe purgatory these days much anymore. Um, purgatory, my understanding is that, like you said, it's it's essentially hell, but it's you're not there long. It's like going to prison. So, I mean, it's like it's like okay, you, you messed up, but we're not going to send you all the way to hell forever. You just chill out here for a little while and then you go to heaven. Um, but like I said, it, that's an interesting one because a lot of people don't. I, I don't. I don't know if people talk about purgatory much these days because it's not. But I should find that out. And again, I probably didn't explain anything you didn't know already. Do I like have to read the Bible? Do you have to read the Bible? Uh, no, I, I, well, there's probably moments where I should probably give you the official answer that I can give you like what I think. Um, I, I, I don't think, let me put it this way, the Bible is this thick and the words are very small. Uh, there's probably not a lot of people who have read the Bible cover to cover and can honestly say, I've read the entire Bible. Uh, but as long as you learn from the Bible, if you go to church and you learn the lessons that we should be learning from the Bible, um, I mean, if you do, great. And, and that's, that's one of those things where no one will ever actually read it and feel like, oh, that was a waste of time. You will always be better off if you do. You'll feel enriched if you do, and if you read parts of it, and there's versions of it that are a little more, that are a little simpler, etc. Um, it's a good thing for you to do. So, but 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 I certainly would not say like God's not going to walk. You're not going to go to heaven and God's going to ask you for your book report and say, you know, I think it'll be alright. But it's not complain it. But if you do, even better. So. Uh... I'd have forgotten what I was going to ask. But, uh, 
So you said that you had debates with your Christian friends about Christian stuff. Sometimes there are other conversations. What conversations did you have? Say that again. You said that you had conversations with other Christian friends, you know, Christian stuff, Christianity. What kind of stuff did you talk about? Well, I mean, this wasn't something I didn't like every day, all day. But I mean, I've had, I think when I said that, I don't remember what the question was that led me to that, but. Um, you know, I, I've had conversations with other Christians. Some of them were, were very pleasant conversations. Some of them were not very pleasant conversations. Because, like, this is, sometimes you'll meet Christians who, who will absolutely positively tell you that you're going to go to hell if you don't do X and Y exactly a certain way. And I'm like, yeah, calm down. I really don't. I, I don't think so. I, I don't think God is going to send me to hell if I don't do a very specific thing in a very specific way. Um, again, I, I kind of feel like everybody sort of has an understanding. If you are a good person, you are going to heaven. And, and if you, especially if you honor God the way that you should, because again, God created the earth. We should say thank you periodically, frankly. Uh, it's not a lot for God to ask. I mean, if you abide by the commandments, you are in good shape. Um, so yeah, I mean, so I've had conversations with people of other denominations, you know, it could be very simple, you know, why is, is Mary such, such a big thing in the Catholic religion? You know, I explained that the best I could. Um, so, you know, kind of ranges, I mean, you know, over the years I've had conversations about different kinds of things. I have two things. One, I think somewhere in the Bible, like when you go up to heaven, isn't there like, an angel that like tells like you know, I, I don't know like what it really is but, like so you're yeah kind of where like you know, like says like you know I've never been to I, I've heard. I mean, I, I I know it's it's common understanding that we all have guardian angels, for example. Um, you know, I, as Catholics, I believe we believe in the concept of guardian angels, so we, you know, people that have left us and sort of watch over us. Um, but I, but it, I, you know, again, I I would never have the. I, it would be very bold of me to try to say I know what heaven is like and I'll explain it to you because I don't and, and most people don't and most people acknowledge that we. Really don't. Um, so the specific stuff, I think, is what I'll tell you. Oh, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yes, it does. It, it, it does. Um, but again, I couldn't quote it for you. I mean, it's, I, I know it certainly has. But again, I kind of feel like, you know, heaven to me is one of those things that you, you can sort of have a little ideas of what heaven is. And, um, you know, you guys get me like on real specific stuff, but I don't, I don't know if I know all the answers to it. But, um, but it's, a, it's a good place to be, I know that. I forgot it, but I, oh yeah, I, I, I forgot the original, but I saw it. So is your guardian angel like someone like in your family that died, or is it just like a random Um, you mean like if there's somebody up there and the God says, okay, you are assigned to that guy over there? I, I would say it's probably somebody that you knew in, in life. Um, but again, don't quote me on it. You know, there's, there's a lot of very specific things that I, I don't know if I know the exact answer to. Um, the way I understand it, though, it is probably somebody that you, you knew in life that you know, takes care of you. And I have another one. Yeah. So, uh, do you think like guardian angels could have like more than like one person? Like, not, not one. So, I mean, like. Do they have to take care of a few people? Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Okay. What you got? Oh, you're just thinking alike, huh? I see, I see the hand kind of like kind of going up and then kind of down again. Yeah. Oh, I think I was going to ask you if you have any commandments for your life. If the Bible itself, is it like a book of teachings or anything? Or is it just a book? Because I understand that there are lessons. That's a great question. I think. Um, 
put it this way, it's, it's interesting you say that because I remember when I was first approached or talking about teaching in class, um, and I kind of was wondering if maybe the, the, the Ten Commandments was like too simple to sort of use that as, as my starting point because it's because again it's an old it's an Old Testament thing. But I think I wouldn't say that. I mean, we, like I said, it's an excellent question. I mean, I, I wouldn't look at the Bible as a specific rule book. I mean, I think the only thing I can specifically think of in terms of like what the rules are, it would be the Ten Commandments. It would be the sacraments. Again, if you do all the sacraments as a Catholic. Um, as you as you grow up, um, but other than that, I think just the the sort of you know Christian guidelines that we get from reading the Bible, you know, it just kind of helps us in the little nuances in between. I mean, put it this way: don't steal, don't kill anybody. I mean, these are pretty obvious. You know, don't do those things. Um, but then I think the Bible more or less is trying to help you kind of nuance, you know, between the. Uh, you know why we treat people the way we do. Um, if you're ever in a situation like the, I, you know, how, how to how to deal with people, um, you know, it kind of gets into the sort of nitty gritty. If that makes any sense. Uh, so how are we going to get the other hours for the hours? Uh, what's that? Be more events. Yeah, there, there will be. I, I don't know exactly what's coming down the pike. I, I know basically as soon as I put it this way. They, they will be more than happy to make sure that you know how you can help out when the opportunity presents itself. Um, as they start to announce things, they'll they'll tell you very quickly what, what those things are. Um, so yeah, you'll have plenty of opportunities to, to do that. Um, and you know, a lot of you know, I, I, that seems to be like the big question I get from a lot of parents is about hours and service hours. I try to tell them, look, the, the church wants you to pitch in where you can. If maybe by the end of the you know, we haven't quite given you enough opportunity to get 15 hours. Obviously, don't worry about us. I mean, basically, as things come up, they'll let you know if you can help out. Great. Right? Um, you know, but it's not it's not a hard and fast rule that you have to have. Uh, you know, 15 exactly, etc. Uh, um, that's kind of like a chicken and egg kind of question. I think probably the reason I, 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 I would say that the reason one of the reasons that the calendar was sort of formed as it was, um, was based on the idea of seven days. I think that is probably exactly correct. Um, but again, it's like you know, the, cal the calendar didn't exist before God created man, obviously. So, um, but, I, but I do think there's a correlation. Well, seven is also a whole number. Seven is a whole number. So I, th I, th I think that's sort of how we came up with the, the calendar as we did it. The way we did it, the days of week, etc. Wow, it's 7.40 already. I didn't even realize the time was. See, this is good. This made the time go faster. How many people is long as it Uh, that would really, I mean, obviously there's a lot of versions and there's a lot of, I almost feel like it depends how, how big the letters are, really. Um, I couldn't tell you like what the very first possible thing is. I was going to say, you know, like, is there a 666 page where they leave that number out? Interesting question. Sometimes I, when I go to an elevator and I'm like, well, this place really doesn't have a 13th floor, I always think, like, is it really? Um, all right, guys, let's bring it in and uh, we're going to close it out. Guys, thank you. This was, uh, this was fun. Hopefully we'll do this every time. Come with, come with questions. Have a good night. We're, we're going to say a prayer before we finish up. We're going to say a prayer before we finish up, guys.
Everybody ready? We're going to do one Our Father and one Hail Mary to finish up. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Guys, thank you. That was very successful. I appreciate it. You still have like three minutes. So I don't know if your parents, I mean, I assume your parents are probably outside, but if not, you're good. Have a good night. You too. I know you said that next week you have to describe to me at all. I don't think I like it. If you don't, it's okay. I might just by accident, but yeah, I took. Yeah, I'll, I promise next week I'll bring some in. Okay, awesome. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. Um, is it next week? Be when is our next? I believe weeks, but I'll actually tell you what. Let me tell you for sure. Thank you. Thank you. You're